following and they have to abuse the old shepherd to gain ground. I don't understand. If God called you, why do you need to step and abuse the only man and woman that raised you to be something today? You big shepherds, small shepherds, you should be actually on your knees every single day and giving thanks to God. And you take a cup of medic to that shepherd that raised you. To that man and woman, first your parents, then to that man and woman who has nurtured you into the calling you're standing in. Do you know that there is a blessing? Do you know that most of you God left you because you touched your own father and mother? God left, and you're just naked. Young shepherds. Psalms 23 and verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. Can you open your Bibles in Ezekiel 34? Ezekiel 34 and verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my flock and seek them out as a shepherd cares for his sheep on the day that he is coming, has his, his among his scattered flock. So I will care for my sheep and I rescue them from all the places to which they were scattered on a cloudy and gloomy day. Shepherd, how many times do you rescue? your scattered flock. You know we sing that psalm. Mukama msumba wange seta ginga angala mzamu dunyari ya mudo mto antara kumabili ya mzamu mtifu. Balang. It became an up like an apostle's creed. Do you know the apostle's creed? Is it apostle's creed? I got to know about that creed in the Anglican church. I don't even remember how it goes. We are good at cramming and reciting things, but are they working in your life? Are you living the word? Do you have the power? Do you have the right revelation of the word of God? Do you? Number 13 on, in uh, Ezekiel 34. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the streams and in all the inhabited places of the land. I told you when we are going through the word of God, I want you to tick what has worked for you, what you've done, what you haven't done. Like you tick, tick, you start ticking yourself. The places that have you have failed so that you see how to correct them. Number 14. I will feed them in a good or in a good pasture, and their grazing ground will be on the mountain heights of Israel. There they will lie down on good grazing ground and feed in rich pasture. On the mountains of Israel. Now, shepherd, today is your day. You want people to give a tithe. You want people to give miliki to the man, woman, God. You want people to support your ministry. You see, it became my ministry. It stopped being God's work. But which Pasture, as the, are you giving the sheep? Are you feeding that sheep? Are you guiding that sheep? You love a big following, but can you handle? Do you know where all of them stay? You love 
have a big following and some of you steal other people's sheep. You, you, you're like, aha, they are misusing your talent and gifts. Me, I'll give you the front seat. I'll give you, you serve the Lord every day, every day, every day, every day. Before we know it, we don't see so and so in the church. We are like, oh, what happened? The weak sheep always fall prey. Salvation is a personal deal. But in, when you get saved, you get a shepherd. When you want to move and leave that church, how is your relationship with your shepherd? I, Esther, I left my first job. And I was told to write a resignation letter. I asked when I was getting the job, was I given an appointment letter? And they are like, no. I'm like, since I was not given an appointment letter, I am not writing a resignation letter. Why? Why are you writing that? When you leave a place without warning, you always leave room. You never know you might go back. God is amazing. God can take you back to that place that you left long, long time ago. Why? It might have your medicine. Or you might be carrying something and they need. That is why it is always good to leave places in peace. On Thursday, I told you, either Thursday or Wednesday morning when I was doing a devotion, I think it was Thursday. People who host people be careful. And those they've hosted be careful. Otherwise one of you is going to lose God in the mix. You will read Ezekiel 11 up to 31. They are giving us how a shepherd does things. Like, I will feed my flock and I will let them lie down to rest, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bandage the crippled, and strengthen the weak and the sick. But I will destroy the fat and, dis and, the, fat and the strong who have become hard-hearted hard and persevere. I will feed them with judgment and punishment. Hey. And as for you, my flocks, that says the Lord God, behold, I judge between one sheep and another, between the rams and the male gods, between the righteous and the unrighteous. Is it too little a thing for you that you and you unrighteous ones who are well fed feed in the best pasture? Yet you must trample down with your feet of wickedness the rest of your pastures, or that you drink clear still water yet you must muddy with your feet of wickedness the rest of the water. As for my flock, the righteous, they must feed on what you trample with your feet and drink what you, you muddy with your feet. Verse 19. Huh? Number 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, to them, behold, I myself will judge between the well fed fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and garner with your horns all those that have become weak and sick until you have scattered them away. Church, you have indeed scattered sheep, especially the weak sheep, has been scattered and lost. The Lord wants all the sheep together. Church, what are you doing about that? You're like, ah, that is one. I still have the 99. But the Bible is vice versa. He went back to look for that one sheep. But for us, you're like, you're one person. When you go after all the talents and the gifts everyone has, it's okay, you can go. 
fivefold ministries. The sheep you're left with in the house does not have the same anointing and calling like that of the person you throw out. Number 22. Therefore I will rescue my flock and they shall no longer be prey and I will judge between one sheep ungodly and another godly. Then I will appoint over them one shepherd and he will feed them. A ruler like my servant David, he will feed them and be their shepherd. I told you political arena. The Lord wants a David. You're giving us a soul. Your soul is going to be forced off the sheep. That, that, that's it. Read verse 22. The Lord is saying, I will rescue my flock and they shall no longer be prey and I will judge them no one sheep and godly and another godly. Then I will appoint. God is appointing a shepherd. Now, pastors, check yourself because God is in the business of appointing a new shepherd. And when he, d he removes you off your seat, make sure it is in good faith. Make sure you've run your race. Make sure you've done what you're called to do. Because you're getting off the seat. When Corona came, God decided to clean up the church. And he is removing the shepherd that has not been taking care of his sheep. Then I will appoint over them one shepherd, and he will feed them. A ruler like my servant David, he will feed them and be their shepherd. Now, shepherd, you cannot give. You cannot use your own money to give. And you know how our friends have also become shepherds in WhatsApp groups? Hey, you thought I'm leaving you out. I am not. You woke up and decided to be an admin of a group, a vision bearer, a starter, an apostle in a group. But how do you treat the people in the group? You are in a place of oh, royalty and you are a shepherd. You have to make sure we are all fine. It is you who studied. It was your idea. Do you take time to talk to us? Ask not your only friends that you know. Do you call them to know whether they have food? Do you call them to find out if they are well, they are okay? All those who are very far, they should take care of themselves. And those that you can reach are the only people you hang around with. Those are simple things that keep a friendship going. And you only remember others when there is a need and they need to contribute. That is the truth you don't want to hear. Why? Because you don't have a belt of truth in your waist. It is the Bible. You'll be like, now she... Yeah, it is the Bible. Read your Bible. The Lord is uncrowning I used to tell you and you think it is a joke. It is in the Bible. Confirmation. Everyone who took God's place, the Lord is raising a new shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David will be a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make a covenant. Of peace with them and will <laughs> you some of you in your groups there's no peace people are just there for the sake of being there why because they love you too much to let go of you but if it were possible the way you're bold enough to say certain things they would have done it to you it is, most of the times, it's only Esther has the confidence to ask questions which are not liked. Others just keep quiet and they're like, ah, let's just go on.
I don't like working with people who do not know how I think. That is being a liar and a hypocrite. Which you don't like. You don't like people who are open with you. You like people who pamper you and lie to you that I love you when they don't love you. Why? You're making mistakes and they don't talk about them. Someone who does not tell you you're wrong does not love you. Uganda, you've loved me so much that you've told me all my mistakes from head to toe. Reaching a point of even telling me how I am a tomboy, I don't have a figure. That means you love me that much, right? To try and make me understand even how I look physically. It is only your friend that loves you that much that will be so observant to see some of those things. That is if they are true. The confidence I have in the size I have, that one, you can't do much about it. Those who know me in that state when I'm not feeling sick and sorry for myself, I used to feel sorry for myself. That one I cannot even lie. But when that left, when the Lord started delivering me again, the confidence I have, you cannot chase. Some of you are surprised that I can even do a live video and I dance. They call it confidence, taking back the power that was snatched by the devil. You can also do. It is okay, you can also do. You can also do. Number 25, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Let's read, num yes, a covenant of peace with them and I w and will eliminate the predator animals from the land so that they may live securely in the wilderness and sleep safely in the woods. I will make them and the places around my hill, Jerusalem, Zion, a blessing and I will make showers come down in their season. There, there will be abundant showers of blessing, divine favor. Also the tree of field will yield its fruit and the earth will yield its produce and my people will be secure on their land. When you are with your friends, do you feel secure? When you are with your pastor, do you feel secure? When you are in your father's house, do you feel secure? Because your father is a shepherd too. Do you feel secured? Do you feel secured? Do you feel secured? Also the tree of the field, verse 27, also the tree of the field will yield its fruit and the earth will yield its produce and my people will be secure on their land. Then they will know with confidence that I am the Lord when I have broken the bars of their yoke and have rescued them from the hand of those who made them slaves. Government has made people slaves. Church has made people slaves. Family has made people slaves. Friends have made each other slaves. And the Lord has said he's going to rescue us. He, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Ezekiel 34 and verse, we started from 11. The Lord has said that I am the Lord when I have broken the bars of their yoke and have rescued them from the hand of those who made them slaves. They will no longer be prey 
to the nations and predators of the earth. We will not devour them, but they will live safely. And no one will make them afraid in the day of Messiah's reign. I will prepare for them a place renowned, renowned for planting crops, and they will not gain they will not again be victims of famine in the land, and they will not endure the insults of the nations any longer. Then they will know with assurance that I, the Lord, their God, I am, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. As for you, my flock, the flock of my pastor, you are men, and I am your God, says the Lord, of, says the Lord God. We are looking at Psalms 23, and that is verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield. Does your shepherd do the feeding? Does he guide? Does he shield? I asked a question, shepherds. You tell us, give a tithe. Thanksgiving. Give a tithe. Hmm? Please sow a seed in this ministry. Do you feed? Do you guide? And do you shield me? And I, we've been reading Ezekiel 34, 11 to 31. Go through it. If you are a young shepherd, an old shepherd, and the shepherd is not only the pastor. The shepherd goes as far as the family. The shepherd goes as far as your WhatsApp groups. The shepherd goes, if you've ever had an idea and you collected the people, you became a shepherd. But do you feed us? Do you guide us? And do you shield me? Because I am a sheep in your group. Verse 2 of Psalms 23. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. Revelations chapter 7 verse 17. Revelation 7 and 17. You can like, you can share, you can do a watch party. Share with others. Sharing is caring. And I told you, you love people to share, share your things. Do you share for others? You want people to watch you. Do you watch other people? But I told you, tag me in all your things. I, when I get time, I sit, I watch, I do, I watch party, I laugh. Alone. You know me, I watch things when people have gone to sleep. I laugh alone, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Revelations chapter 7 and verse 17. Let's start from uh, 15. For this reason, let me see verse because it looks like it's coming from space. When you get time, you can go back and read from up. But let me start from number 11. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the 24 elders and four living creatures. And they fell to their face, faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and majesty and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and mighty belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. I asked you, how, do you lo how long do you give praise and worship in your church? And some of you keep forgetting that you are the church. And you badly want the church to be opened. In my mind, I'm like, you want government to open you up, up. Some of you cannot respect instructions. 
and yet church gives instructions but they cannot obey authority all they can do is wind even to be a katonga return on your night church or mugu kumu kama watu kubisamu nini that is why the earthly spheres are putting all those funny, funny instructions. Why? Because you yourself has failed to do what God is telling you. <laughs> you want out, but can you handle the pressure out? Can you handle? Do you know the rules that were given in the UK to have church open? Do you know the rules? And church has to go on. I told you. When you go somewhere and they don't want you to step on the carpet with your feet, use your knees because they never talked about the knees. Use your knees. They will find you on your knees. And when you go down on your knees, that is when you tell the Lord, Lord, I don't think I can handle the instructions in this house. Please make a way where seems to be no way. He made a way for the Israelites in the, oh, the Red Sea just parted ways. Moses had to follow instructions. What do you have in your hand? I have a stick. Raise your hand with that stick and command the ocean to open. Just a few things. You keep questioning God's instructions and God just looks at us like, Very few things, some politicians are not getting that position because they don't respect instructions. And in God's eyes, authority comes from God. Because God is like, you want to be a leader, but are you willing to listen? Are you willing to emphasize? Are you willing to apologize? Are you willing to do something about it. If you cannot apologize, who is going to give you a position? If you're not willing to listen, listen, who is going to give you their vote? Because after you talk a lot, tell us what you're going to do. When you go up there and you become something, you forget those down. Most of the people that have gone abroad, you've used people's money to go abroad. When you get there, go to, even forget, you're like, sit down, child. Then you start yapping. You don't want to work. Hmm? You just sit there. Now you want our money abroad. You are a very bad shepherd abroad. You're supposed to feed, you're supposed to guide, and you're supposed to shield. When your friends come here, you don't shield them. All you do is drive them out of your houses. Why? You've got to the place of royalty. We don't have enough space to accommodate you. And I look at you and I'm like, before you came abroad, no one knew you. Some of you came with a suitcase having two shirts and one trouser. Some of you, you got there and people started helping you, giving you clothes. I am talking out of experience because I've been helped. People have put in their money. Eh, hey, mama. Then one of the elders responded saying to me, those these who are dressed in the long white robes, who are they? And from where they and um, from where did they come? I say to him, my Lord, you know the answer. And he said to me, These are the people who come out of the great tribulation, persecution, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb because of his atoning sacrifice. I told you. That you consecrate your firstborns. I told about consecration. I told you to consecrate your firstborns. Hope you all did. You were supposed to read Numbers 
13 and you follow how what it's saying and you consecrate everyone in your household i know there are people who are followed and they are doing it let me hope you're doing it especially for that young family For this reason they are standing before the throne of God and they serve him in worship day and night in his temple. We told you to attend divine encounter. Then you're like, ah, ah, me, I can do my worship experience. See, the Lord is looking for a divine encounter so that you connect, so that you have an encounter. Now for you, the reason you're giving, I will do you see worship experience. I will do a worship experience. I will do. Before you do your experiences, please go back and attend the divine encounter. Why the Lord wants to have an encounter with you. Please, Apostle Bunjo, do watches for that divine encounter so that everyone attends. I, as a person, I will do a watch for the divine encounter for seven days. Everyone has to attend that divine encounter. For seven maximum days, and you have a divine encounter. Why you're quarreling church that you went out, you never did a divine encounter. The Lord needed a divine encounter. Why? He left your churches long time ago. You are alone. And we got an opportunity on the 3rd of June to do a divine encounter. For you like, ah, ah, that, is, that was for Bombo. That's it. My friend, God took over Bombo. It's no longer theirs. But they are custodians that need to tend the sheep. I will do the watches for divine encounter for seven maximum days because lately when i request people to do things everyone takes their time and some don't even do at all i will do myself i wish i can get the songs that were done during riot i wish i can get those videos and i do the watches myself God wants to use those things and for you guys think it is yours. Eh? Hey, this is it. The shepherd. I request for things. Some are like, you think you know us too much. Someone was bold to say that behind my back. And I was like, eh, I thought it was about love. The person was bold enough even to talk about the money I gave them when there was a need. We all need repentance. It has always been about love. That one, I've talked about it because Chanuma, you do not know what people go through to sacrifice. That nuschikumi chakuwa na kugamba gendo guleyo mokene nevinyewa munango wewo. You don't know what we go through. Yes, it is my calling to give. But you have no idea. That is so sad. But guess what? I'm not in the business of stopping what the Lord called me to do. If you see it as it is fine. But let me hope the seed you're sowing for your children does not germinate and it becomes a big tree when it has hatred in it.
Number 16, they will hunger no longer, no thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to springs of the waters of life. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes, giving them eternal comfort. and restores my soul life he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake there is no way we are going to run away from righteousness whether you like it or not righteousness is a door a key to, to open doors church you want out make sure your level of righteousness has gone up to and I told you righteousness we just pursue righteousness Even though I walk through the, the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. When you don't walk in righteousness, you cannot handle the next level of the, of the valley. You cannot. You cannot. If righteousness is not part of your dress code, you will not. You will not survive. You will not survive a wave of not having a child of not getting married, of not having documents abroad, of not having a job, you will not survive, especially in the so-called new normal, when you don't walk right with God. Pursue righteousness and you see a door open. Those are very simple things whereby you just sell this life, I'm done. Now let me concentrate on my God. I, the devil is a liar. I wish the devil was a human being. And we meet face to face and I show him time. Very simple things that we have to do. And you get everything you want. And you stop going to pastors for prayers. And it just flows. Good. Hey, let me tell you something. I, Esther, me and my self and I, I will pursue righteousness. I will walk right with my God. And you will stay behind me and talk to them as I go forward, as I get everything he promised me. What you think you have now is nothing, especially when you don't have Christ. The Lord has just allowed you to have it. Why? Because if you don't have it for you, you will die. You cannot handle a life without a car. You cannot handle a how a life without a house. You cannot handle a life without a man. You cannot handle a life without a woman. You cannot handle a life without kids. You cannot handle a life without that big following. You will just die and he loses you just like that. It was by his grace that you're in that position. Why? You don't have the grace to work single. For years, you don't have the grace to work without money in your wallet. You will die. Because I've seen some of you when you don't have money. <gasps> oh. Now, step on people knowing that it was just the grace and he can just do like this. And you're no more. You cannot handle. You cannot handle certain tunnels, certain turmoils. You cannot. 
Don't even you don't even say anything. Just keep quiet and walk smartly and be wise enough and don't just say things anyhow because you don't have the grace of of being in particular positions. You don't. You don't have a grace of being sick every day. You don't have that grace of being in pain every day. You don't have it. The Lord was like, Agwe we na kuteka mka position na kujakofa. Some of you, when especially the men, when they don't have money, vanang. Okanya gamba oriote vanang. See na vya kogera when na vifu na talk to me. When they have money, the Lord just wants to burn. No wonder someone said money is the root cause of evil. That is why when some of you get money, mugwate bubi nyo. Why? Because it is too new to you. You will be surprised. I've seen money. <laughs> I've touched money. I have seen money. Why? I am a giver. <laughs> On a bigger level. For you, you just saw the 100,000 Ugandan shillings I gave. You don't know Esther gives 5 million. And she never stresses anyone she has given 5 million Ugandan shillings. Have you given anyone such money? Have you stood in the gap when someone needs millions? Can you handle that gap? Never talk about someone's sacrifice again. Never. When someone does something, keep it to yourself, whether you've loved it or not, because you opened the door of a curse in your life. You sowed a very bad seed. Time for repentance. Because I don't write it here, that I can give millions of money, it does not make me a stupid person. Why don't I just go and put it? It's because it is a calling. It is part of my dress code. Giving is like breathing to me. Shabbat! Those are the leaders we carry around. Number four, even though I walk through the, the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Some of you are seated on that table and you think it was obvious for you to get on that table. You have a Anointed and refreshed my head with oil. I keep telling you fresh anointing. Every day. Every day. Every day fresh anointing. Look forward to fresh anointing every day. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall flow me. All the days shall follow me. Oh, huh. surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love is all I want. Unfailing love is all I want. Shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. That was today's word. I've, I, I keep telling you I move around and, and read newspapers, attend different services with different people. 
but yesterday i attended pastor sarah said Jova, we have her at 3 p.m ugandan time she's about to log on in three minutes i can't wait i don't want to miss but yesterday she talked about growing in growing and being patient god has withheld most things because we are not ready be patient with people. Some people's prayers are taking longer in their situation because they haven't changed to be able to handle what God has planned for them. We read Psalms 37 and verse 7, then read Psalms 40 and verse 1 to 4, then read 1 Corinthians 13, 11 to 14 that had a... Uh, when I was young, I thought as a young child, my thoughts. Then she read Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and 14. Then 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. Go watch her on Dream TV yesterday. I did a watch for her. I am going to do another one for her at 3 p.m. Because she's coming. It will be her service. Hope you attended Apostle Winjo's service. It was about the Holy Spirit. I caught it in the middle. I woke up a bit late. Because I stayed there. I, I had a, a Zoom prayer meeting at 5 a.m. for UK. And it was midnight my time. And I stayed on until when I slept. Then I woke up. Thank you so much, those who are able to tune in uh, live, those uh, who will watch later. God bless you. I pray for a fresh anointing. I, I pray that God gives you money. And please go back and read Psalms 23 and understand it. Stop cramming it. Stop singing it. Please do what it says, especially if you are in a position of a shepherd. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord sanctify you. May the Lord enlarge your ter territories. Thank you for today. May the Lord bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word. I plead the blood of Jesus over the word. I thank you for those who are able to attend. Those who, are, who don't tap that pattern. You know that they are there, but they are there. Eh, Lord, bless them. And those who will watch 10 years from now, bless them. Father, sanctify them. Increase them for the glory of your name. Father, for us, we want shepherds who teach, who guide and feed us so that we can feed back. Father, intervene and take over. Let that psalm become part of our lives. Let that psalm be part of how we live. Because we read the word of God and it gets life. We bring it out of the Bible. We live it. We walk by it. And we are empowered through your word, through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my God. Thank you, King of Glory. And I thank you for the new week. King of Glory, guide us in the week. Father, all the activities that are going to happen in the new week, Father, continue to guide us. Continue to teach us. Open people's eyes to see. Father, those who do not know Christ, bring them, Lord. Father, touch their hearts. Lord, those who don't like to walk right with you, Father, convict them tonight. Convict them tonight because righteousness is a process and everyone is supposed to pursue it if they ever want anything from you. But if they want things their way, when they're putting in their energy, then they will delay themselves. Father, open our eyes to see. I continue to pray for chat that they obey the instructions and walk right with you in each and everything they do. They learn to obey instructions of the mere man they see because with God it becomes automatic. Why? It is an everyday thing. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, my beloved and prayer. Amen. Thank you so much. Those who have watched, and happy birthday to everyone who has made it on their birthday this today. Have a blessed day. Those who are celebrating anniversaries, oh, may the Lord bless you, sanctify you, and walk with you. Happy birthday to those who made their birthday today. The, today is July the 19th. May God bless you. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.